little goodies. Jingle bells, grease monkey smells, a nosy light in the Two more days until Christmas. Oh, and Today is a great day. Today is another day of the Goring 20s takeover. And today, in person, in studio, for the first time in I don't know how long, I have another great Goring 20s guest with us. Miss Katie, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I am. I'm doing great. Uh, I, I, I like the fact that we're in studio doing this and not over Zoom. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely something that is... Uh, I don't know, I don't know just, just it's a different, different vibe. vibe. It really yeah, is. Like when you're on, you're on Zoom, Zoom, yeah, you're, you're talking, talking to someone, but when you see when you talk to someone in person, person that's, that's that's the best. best. I feel the same way. Like I'm sure I can have like a great conversation on Zoom, yeah. but it's another thing to talk to a screen than talk to you in person. Right. And be here on this comfy couch. I'm glad, I'm glad you find the couch comfy. comfy. Uh big, big shout, shout out to my girlfriend and I. Uh more my girlfriend. She helped clean before the thing. By the way, we, we do have some live studio audience. Uh, Mr. Coffer's over there. <laughs> How you doing over there, buddy? You good? Let it out. You're good. It's okay. It's okay. We're all we're all friends and family here. Come on. We're good. Jay is here in the studio. Hayes is here in studio as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is this has been, been fun, fun for me this month, month especially, especially covering Goring 20s, 20s and, and um, you, you were a no-brainer no when it came to bringing people on to talk about this because, because I mean, every, every night, night we saw you was, was something, something out of the box, box something, something hilarious, hilarious, something funny. Me and Hayes, before, before you guys got, got here, she has so much video recorded from, you know, Haunt last year that she was sending me a ton of clips of just you. And we were really busting up over the one because you you came up to us, you sang you sang Jingle Bells, but you 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 redid the lyrics to Goring Twenties, and then you you talked about how you were gonna sacrifice all the people so you can revive Mariah Carey for for Christmas time, and we were just dying watching that right now. Um, what was it like? You know, this was your your first year on on the streets of Not Scary Farm. What was it like for you to go out there and kind of? Um, really open up more to a more character and more interactions with people. How was that like for you? At first, a little terrifying. Um, this is my second year of Haunt. My first time being was in a maze. So getting to be this character and expand it and just go around and be this character to a whole bunch of different people was a wild experience. Yeah, yeah that I mean, it, I mean, and I've always said this too. With a, a zone like the Goring 20s, it's not like, you know, Ghost Town or anything where you have that darkness to hide and everything. You guys are really out there the entire time. People see you. I mean, I, I would say the only hidden resources you guys have is either the, the flower shop or the, or the, the newsstand. But um, you guys are out there constantly interacting with people, telling a story, um, entertaining yourself on the slow nights, I imagine. Um, just trying to do whatever you can to not only sell that story, but to give that experience to the guests. Um, what do you find the most challenging about constantly having to be in that spotlight of it's do or die, we gotta constantly keep this up, we gotta constantly keep the interactions with the guests. And it, on top of that, you guys interact with one another to tell a story. So how is that like coming up with that as far as like the mindset going into that? Um, well, to start with, the scaring aspect of it, like you said, we're in the daylight. Um, I'd say going from having hiding holes in the maze and in the darkness to scare from, and then going to broad like daylight uh, to scare from was a bit of a learning curve. I had to learn, how am I going to scare if I, A1, am just like a little flapper girly, a little dancer, prancing around the streets on bright daylight, how am I still going to get the same scares that someone in Ghost Town, who looks like this horrifying, grotesque monster, 
how am I going to get the same scares? So I had to come up with ways that I could still get the element of surprise out of guests and still get that scare. Um, and I, I think you accomplished that really well, especially with, uh, you know, the whole microphone and everything. You're, the, the whole gimmick you were given, obviously, with bringing that character to life as far as the singing goes and everything. Um, you can go from singing to just scaring within a matter of seconds. And I saw that a lot many nights. Um, for you, obviously, with the microphone, you know, that was a huge, huge part of, of, of that. Um, what was it like day one getting this microphone? Were you kind of just... Was it one of those things where you're like, okay, how am I going to make this work? Or you kind of already had ideas going into it? Oh, well, going into it, when they told me my character, you're going to be a jazz singer. I was like, jazz singer? How does, it, how, how does a jazz singer become scary? So I thought, you know what? Microphone. Microphone. That could be the one thing that points out the character that I am a singer. I'm a jazz singer. And when I originally got the microphone, it was just, just supposed to be like an accessory to me, like just a prop. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of my castmates asked me, so how are you going to scare with that? <laughs> After night one, I just decided, well, I guess I'm going to swing at people. Well, I guess it's going to be a weapon, like a weapon prop. I mean, it worked out, especially with the theming of, of kind of, you know, with the devil's elixir, making you guys violent and all that stuff. I mean, it works out perfectly. There were nights where I would see you beat Martin to death with it uh, during the witching hours that you guys had. And I would just stand there and just laugh because it's like you had it out for Martin. What was the rivalry between you and Martin? How did that begin? And then how did it escalate towards the end? Well, Martin just was one of the most willing victims, <laughs> but also the best at like retaliating. Because the harder I would kill him, the next death bell, he would kill me even harder. And I was like, wow, that was for last time, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it's just a constant back and forth with you two, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I killed my other castmates as well. And there were magnificent times where they would kill me in the most brutal ways. Like, there was a time Martin uh, had his, his jug, his thunder jug, yeah. his gin jug. And he just bashed me on the head. I tried to get up. He stepped on my chest and made me go back to the ground and was like, stay down. And then continued to bash my brains in. Like, it was so, like, in my head, it was graphic. And I was just like, wow, this is great. Oh, my God. No, because, you know, Hayes and I would walk through many nights. And uh, there would there'd be moments where we would honestly stay there for a little bit. Because I knew we were going to catch something. And, and ironically, I, I, that was one of the favorite things that I, one of the thing, favorite things I caught on camera was you choking him out. Um, that was a funny one. Uh, and, and then just to see, uh, it, what was also funny to me was towards the end of the run when you guys were just kind of like in an effort attitude in the sense of, you had a picket sign now all of a sudden. And and like all these other people, like you had the like Martin's character who was supposed to be the one selling the alcohol, and now is the one protesting against the alcohol. And I'm just like, hey, his sign said gin is a win. Gin is, yeah, <laughs> is a win. A I love that. I mean, it, it just, but just to see you guys do all this towards the end, like, you know, you went from one character in the beginning, and then at the end, you're just like, yeah, we're going to do the complete opposite tonight. See how people can get confused. And I remember just walking out and like, but yesterday, yesterday you were protesting, you were protesting for, it. for it. Now, now you're, you're against, against it. it. I'm, I'm like, what, what's, what's happening around, around here? I, I, I think, honestly, like, like and, and we've said this time and time again, especially from when it started to where it is now, Goring 20s has, has become one of those zones that, that I don't think people expected it to be this big. And it and it's and it's blown up in, in the best way possible. I mean, the first year was obviously figuring out that story, figuring out these characters, like what's going on. I, I say by year two, when they started really um, had a grasp of that idea, they really elevated it to the next level. Talk about the 50th, though. I mean, the 50th, this is where I feel like this is probably where the zone has been like the best by far since it's, it's, since its inception. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, we had a lot of new people come in today. Or, you know, this year, uh, yourself included, as far as the Goring 20s family goes, uh, a lot of people came back. And to have, have that, that mix of, of both um, people, people that have been there with people, people that are brand new, new I, thought I thought it was, it was a really, really good, good um, you know, great, great combination between everybody. everybody. So, so what, was, there was there anything that, that like going, going into it, did you talk, talk to any of the people that have been there before to see what their perspective of things was and try to like kind of maybe Frankenstein of what some of they do? Or did you kind of just kind of just go when as you went, when as you go as you went throughout the season? Uh, to kind of like, hey, that looks cool. Maybe I'll do that later, you know, or this looks fun. Maybe I'll 
include myself into that later? Like, was there any of those? Like, did you talk to a lot of the vets and all that coming in? Before I went in, I honestly didn't speak to much of the vets, but trust me, I was watching. On my night off, my first year, I went through Goring 20s and I was just watching everyone like a hawk. The way they scared, the way they would incorporate their 1920s personas and then suddenly become a monster again right and go right back into that 1920s persona and how would they mi and how would they would mix horror with those 1920s characters yeah i mean i, I think that and that's what's amazing with these characters is is one minute they're playing that role of, say for, for example the monsters or you know the gin runners all that stuff and then all of a sudden you just snap and it's like something just triggered you guys and all of a sudden you guys are just Terrifying. terrifying um what was also cool this year uh with the exception of the goring 20s is we finally got that background with room 13. um this is something i've been talking about a lot because i feel like a lot of people um didn't understand the of the message of the maze but like me going into it i was like oh dude we're in the blind tiger we're going into the hotel now we're finding out where this stuff is being made at um was there, was there anything, anything on your aspect, aspect that they, they did they tell, tell you guys anything about room 13 going in to kind of give you guys more details so you guys, guys can include it in the streets or did you guys, guys kind of have, have to go, go through it and learn it yourselves? A uh, kind of a mix of two. Before the season started, I think they were like, this is what room 13 is going to be. Um, this is how this is the lore of room 13 and this is how it ties in with your lore. And I loved Room 13 so because it added so much depth to what the Goring 20s really is. Right. Things that we didn't know about the Devil's Elixir. Mm -hmm. um, like, I didn't know how the Devil's Elixir ties into Bloodline. Wow. Did you know this either? I didn't know this. That's, 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 that's shocking news to me. I didn't know that. Here's the lore. Breaking news. The Devil's Elixir was alcohol that was meant for the vampires okay of, was it valdonia yeah it's not meant for human consumption which is why it turns the people all crazy <laughs> not not to be good doing do good, some good storytelling right there some good lore. i know they got their own like cinematic universe going in the background if Knott's made like a book of all their lore on how like every maze in the past like tied together all the zones, I would buy that book. I, I would read it. I, 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 I bought it for Marvel. Marvel. Why I would sure as hell buy it for Knott's and just Knott's cinematic universe. I, I, it'd be great. I know. I'm like I, I and that's the thing about and that's what's great about your guys as characters is is you are given these characters, but you guys go above and beyond to make them so much your your own. You know, and, and you guys really do make them like standout characters where you guys. You guys yeah, honestly are, are at this point in, in the community, you guys are celebrities at this point, you know, people will come back because they remembered your character. They saw your character on TikTok. They call it, you know, on YouTube, on social media, and people will come and legit, like, find you guys and like, thank you guys, take pictures of you guys, you know, and, and just, I've even seen people come in with their iPads and literally sit there and draw you guys real time as you guys are scanning. Like, I think that's some of the coolest shit ever. What was, what was it for, for you, you kind of going, going into it? it? Like, like I, know I know you, I know you got, got a lot of fan art over the over the the, the course of the season. season. A lot of great compliments. A lot of uh, photography videos. videos you know, you, you name it. it. What, was what was some of the coolest things out of, of, of receiving, receiving or, or getting any of those? Oh, well, all the artists are so sweet and so talented. I love seeing not only what they drew of me, but of other people and how they like bring this character that's just walking around on the streets into a character that I can imagine like in a cartoon or a TV show. I got a lot of really sweet, um, well, bracelets, one thing. People would make bracelets. Those were good. Someone actually showed up with my character's name, like on the bracelets. That's and awesome. My character's name was Sasha, Sasha the Songbird. So I now have a Songbird bracelet and a Sasha bracelet. Like, and I don't even personally remember telling these people like hey my name's sasha yeah like i think they just overheard oh that's sasha and then they made the bracelet that's so sweet and so thoughtful <laughs> no it, i mean and that's what's cool about it is like i said i mean there's so many forms of art form that people will do to, to show appreciation for you guys of, of what they're what they're capable of doing you know uh, for example we all know our good friend rob the howling hour he, he's he's great at his photography he's been coming up with that lately um jay will be coming in Doing, doing some, some video, video you know he's, he's good, good and talented, talented at that, that. I, do, I do i do my video stuff, stuff you know i have my own style, style of that but, but i mean you just see to see everyone's style, style to see how everyone kind of merges the themes with not only just music, music but like 
effects, the way the lighting is, you know, photo editing and stuff like they really, really make these so cinematic to the point where it's like, why isn't this a movie? Like these guys are out here doing it with just a DSLR camera. And there are people with like hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in Hollywood. Why aren't we turning this into a movie right now? You know, I mean, I think the Goring 20s alone could be a, an amazing storyline to that point of like, Showing, showing everyone, everyone as human to when they drink the elixir to the aftermath. That, that alone, alone could be amazing. I mean, I mean I've, I've always looked at Haunt as live theater. theater. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge theater guy. I mean, I love Broadway and all that stuff. I don't know. You, 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 oh, I'm a theater kid. You are, right? I mean, I, I could see that just by, by your portrayal. I think everyone can see it. Yeah. You know, I had a guest walk up to me on the streets and after I scared her and I got a good boo out of her, she turned around and said, Silence, Peter kid. She knew. <laughs> she knew. She like, like read, read your mind, mind or something. She knew. Um, uh, and, and, and that, that being said, said with, with you being, you know, a theater kid and, and you know exactly what it takes to, to from day one, one of, of, of getting casted uh, into a production, production you know, the, the, from rehearsals and the months and months of leading up to like tech rehearsals, all that stuff. You know how it is and you see the similarities with knots. Um, what's some like, um, like, like tips, tips and stuff that you, you kept, kept with theater, theater that you that translated here to haunt that actually worked, worked very well, well for you. Ooh, the one where they say like the number one rule of improv is always just to go along with it and try to never reject it. So never say no. It's always so, yes and. Yes and, mm -hmm. yes. And then with the Goring 20s, as long as it's in world, as long as it's in that 1920s world, it doesn't break the illusion. Just go along with whatever the guests want as much as possible. How, how hard was it for you to uh, kind of, did you do, did you do a lot of research into the 1920s? So you kind of had an idea of what was relevant at the time, what was kind of like, who were the big players of the time, like famous people. Like, did you do a lot of research going into it? Uh... I did do some research. Uh, my character is a 1920s jazz singer, so I did start listening to like 1920s jazz singers, uh, female singers, and then I'd watch like The Great Gatsby, I'd watch like, I would try to pull up videos of like 1920s like bars, right. like performances, right. and what they would look like. Um, and then I just tried to do more research on the prohibition. Ooh. And what was that like? Right. And I tried to think of what part would my character play in the prohibition? Like, how would that affect her? Mm -hmm. And how does it tie in with what the jazz singer is and what she's doing at the Blind Tiger? Right. Yeah. So that being said, because like now you're bringing that to my attention as far as like, what would your character do during the prohibition and all that stuff? Um, the way I could see as far as uh, a storyline went with you as far as like that is... Maybe because so many bars and stuff had started shut, shutting down because of Prohibition and the Blind Tiger was secretly operating. So you were secretly doing shows in there just to make a little money. But then you got involved with the Devil's Elixir. And, I mean, that's what I like to yeah. think. I mean, yeah. it could, you could have something completely different, but that's what I, in my, my Not fan too far off base. Okay. So I had initially, like, come up to guests and like, are you here to, my, are you here to see my show? Are you going to come see my show? And I'd say I'm performing at the Blind Tiger because it's one of the only bars that's still open during the prohibition. Right. And I'm trying to advertise this to the guests that I think are fun or the guests that I think are going to take part in our sneaky anti-prohibition activities. Right. Yeah. No. And that and that's and that's what I really love with um, with with that as far as certain characters go in the Roaring Twenties, because I feel like there's a lot of everyone's doing their own thing, but there's always that one thing in the back of the head is like oh watch don't forget to watch your back because there's still stuff around here that's a little shady not everything seems as it is um and i love that about every character because every character always has like why are you a cop why like what do you want to know that like and i really and to me being a big movie guy you know you mentioned movies like great gatsby um and you're talking about like old mobster movies and stuff like that that's what a lot of that was is kind of not being a rat who you can trust and who's, you know, undercover as, as cops. Um, I would love it. Um, when, when they, it was, it was more towards, I think mid to like end of the season when you guys would actually kill the two religious, uh, preachers, um, secretly as a group. And that became like a thing real quick. And then when you guys would leave, they would just be dead. 
Um, I know that was a that was a fun little group activity that you uh, you could have gotten in and out of as far as involvement goes. Like, how was that to participate in things like that? Oh man, so that was our witching hour. Yeah. yeah. So that was our witching hour. Um, our bartender Court would come up and you know be like. These guys think we're a bunch of dew droppers, a bunch of grifters, and a bunch of insults that were relevant to the 1920s. Um, and then we drag in these two, these two Bible thumpers, these two preachers, and we would sacrifice them in the name of ending the prohibition, force them to drink the elixir. And then afterwards, after the crowd would clear, me and a couple other of my castmates would go up to Andrew, the male preacher and try to pickpocket. <laughs> um, he thought it was funny. He'd be trying not to laugh as he's laying in there on the floor. And we were like aggressively going through his pockets. There was a time where I took off his shoes and I ran around. And you know, there's this phrase that came up in the 1920s where um, people started referring to their feet as dogs. And like, you know, you take off your stinky shoes and it stinks. And they're like, who let the dogs out? Mm -hmm. So I like ran around with the shoes saying, I let the dogs out. I let the dogs out. <laughs> oh. Oh, and Andrew, the preacher, was so great because he went along with our antics to the point where he started hiding stuff in his pockets for us to pit pocket. Oh, I, I was going to ask that. I was like, now that he got the joke, you think, did he start surprising you guys with things? Yes. So it started out with candy and we were happy and we were so happy. And then he'd start putting other stuff in there. Like there's one time he put dog treats. <laughs> we got pissed off. Like he's lying on the floor. He's not allowed to. Well, I mean, it wouldn't it be in character for him to get up just yet. So he would lay there on the floor for a while. We'd like stuff the dog treats with his nose or whatever. Like just mess with him. So it would turn on him. Yes, he'd be like, oh, I hate you guys. And he'd lay on the floor. And then there was a time oh. where he put puppet, he put socks in his pockets, and then we made sock puppets out of the socks that he hid. And then me and the girls would run around with the sock puppets and like try to scare guests with the sock puppets. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like, like just, just just me. I would just so many ideas of like, how can I make them break when they pull whatever's out of my pocket? You know, I would go. And it was so hard. I would just go to the like the stupidest things, like whoopee cushions, like things you would not expect to be in their pockets. You know what I mean? Just be like, what? Like, just like just absurd jokes and stuff like that. As far as like the shock gum go, like just the gags. You know what I mean? Shout out to Andrew if he ever does listen to it. This that was the greatest. Putting different stuff in his pockets for us to find. How do we elevate that for next year? Now you know what I mean. It's just like. This guy's going to have to wear a trench coat now and just start pulling out stuff. Oh, man. If you get like a little inflatable tire and stuff like that, you're like, why do you have that? No, I, and that's what that's one of my favorite things about the Goring 20s is, is, is just how much fun you guys had. And, and one of my favorite things, too, was like in years prior to stuff, I don't know how, if, it, if anything, if you guys had any confrontation this year, um, but the confrontation between you guys and Carnival. Um, in the past, yeah, that's, that's always, always been an issue, issue as far as like for fun, you know what I mean? For fun purposes, obviously. Um, but there would be little border wars as far as you guys reaching one end and then they're reaching, you guys are at your border, they're at their border of where you guys are with the zones. Funny you should ask, cause I did not participate in any border wars, border wars with Carnival, but I did with Ghost Town. Oh man. On Halloween. We had a border war with Ghost Town. They met us at the train tracks. Um, the train, um, the train tracks, tracks by the stage or the train tracks by um, where the entrance to room 13 is at? Entrance to room 13. Oh, wow. wow. So, so on Western, Western right there. Right there. Yes. That, that must have been, been fun. So how did that pop off? What was what was the, 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 the whole story behind that one? Let's see. Well, the Green Witch Sarah Marshall came and escorted Ghost Town over to us. And then from the start, we just started insulting Ghost Town. Ghost, Ghost Town was insulting us. We're like, you're a bunch of dollar store cowboys, a bunch of barn animals. You smell like hay. Um, so it's just throwing insults back and forth. And I really wish I had a recording of it because I threw the last insult before. Um, and, and it was mom referring to Sarah Marshall. Mom likes this better. <laughs> and then she, Sarah Marshall turned to me and was like, shut up. Shut, shut up. up. <laughs> Silence. Well, you know, it's true. 
Just stating, stating the facts, facts here, here, man. man. That's, that's it. it. I mean, who? Why? why how can you not like the Goring Twenties, man? We had so we've had so much fun this month uh, talking, talking with, with with everyone. We you know we've talked to Martin, we've talked to Jen, um, and just to see the sheer passion you guys have for the zone. You know, I know a lot of people. And nothing, and nothing wrong, wrong with it, it but you know, you know a, lot a lot of people really want to go to ghost, ghost town a lot, a lot of people want to go to all these other zones i am, I am so glad i mean if you guys decide, decide to go to other zones, zones like that's, that's a great, great for you guys i mean you guys get that, that you know and there's other visions you guys, guys may have for other zones, zones and stuff that's, that's great. great but man it's just so hard when i when there's one year that i really love a cast and i come the next year and then like one person's not there and another i'm like man i get so used to all these people like for you as far as the future goes like do you, you want to continue that legacy, that legacy and, try and try to build up Goring 20 still, or do you have plans to want to go other places? I really do want to come back to Goring 20s. And what you said about the cast members, I get that. Um, I'm personally excited for whoever's going to come into the Goring 20s next. Oh, me too, all the time. Um, yeah. yeah. Earlier, you asked me about like what it is to go around and interact just with the rest of the cast. And... Um, since opening night, I came to the realization that like every Goring Twenties member has pretty much has their own backstory in their head for their character. Yeah, and then they bring that onto the streets. Um, and it's really interesting interacting with each of these characters, and I was man, they have like this whole history in their head for this character and their motivations and their reasoning for why they're on either side of the prohibition or anti-prohibition. Right. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the next generation of Goring 20s will bring for our new cast members. I'm excited, too. I mean, I always say, too, I mean, I, it, there are so many talented people that were there in the past that were there last year. But I'm always excited to see what the next generation has to bring in. You know, there's so much energy from uh, a new I, I'd say haunt is as big as it's ever been. You know what I mean? We live in a, We live in a time now. And I just posted about this on social media re recently, but we live in a time now where we're, we're getting closer and closer to having year round haunts. Like, let that sink in for a second. Like, you would have told me that 10 years ago. I would have been like, nah, dude, this is just for Halloween. There ain't going to be no year round stuff. But now we got like events like, of course, they, they, uh, they host March Madness at Not Scary Farm for you guys to go and see everybody. And I think that's a really cool uh, thing to kind of. Uh, see everybody and kind of catch up. It's almost like a little reunion, little high school reunion, if you will. Um, you got events that are doing halfway to Halloween events, and now spring break. spring break is coming up. Exactly, like and that for like a they do that for a month now, and that's that was something that debuted last year, making its return again this year, and such a good event. I mean, I think when you start theming, you know, things to different parts of of and times of the year, people are going to show up. I mean, Halloween Horror Nights right now is working on a year-round haunt in Vegas. You know what I mean? And, and, that, and to see something like that, like, it just, it makes me want now, I want to see, like, what Knott's can do. I mean, Knott's can easily do something like that. And I would, I would be there every weekend if Knott's did something like that. I think all of us would. <laughs> somehow some way but it is it's just so incredible to see this next generation of haunters coming in whether you're behind the scenes whether you're whether you're um out there performing um scaring you know whatever it may be whether you're inside of a maze whether you're doing lighting sound all that stuff makeup costuming you know i mean you're involved with something that's gonna carry on a legacy for the next 50 years you know and that's why I always say the 50th was great. I know the 51 can be better, though. Like 50, I had a great time. So many memories. It was awesome. But 51, man, like you said, bringing in that new group, mm -hmm. that is really going to, you know, not only it might bring in something new that we've never seen before. Someone might create a character for the Goring 20s that we've never seen before. And it might fit so well that you're going to be like, holy shit, who's this kid? Who's yeah. this person? You know what I mean? Like this, this is awesome. Like. And to continue what you've built off. So going into year two was uh, or coming out of year one for Goring 20s for you now, should I say. Um, and now going into year two, was there a lot of things that and we don't we won't discuss them for surprise purposes. But um, was there a lot of things that you took notes of last year that you didn't even necessarily get a chance to do or wanted to do? And or you did at the very end that you're going to be like, OK, now I want to incorporate this more in my character for next year. Yes. Oh, my God. So the singing bit. So I rarely ever did it on streets just because I didn't have really the confidence to, but I did it a couple times and I found it worked really well. 
someone would actually put a show on for the guests where I'd actually start singing on the streets. And my castmates in the area totally knew exactly what to do. While a crowd forms around me watching me sing, right. my castmates come in and they start scaring them while they're completely unaware. Oh, that's and so awesome. And it would awesome. get the best scares out of them because the guests would be just be in a trance staring at me and they would completely like lose focus of all the scare actors around them. Right, right, right. And and usually, like, was there an area that you usually did that at where you had kind of like a high platform so you can kind of be like that center of attention? Or was it somewhere you would just prop up like somewhere random oh, in the yeah, zone? by Louis the Lamppost. There it is. Just kind of <laughs> prop up on there and just kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll be that center of attention like you say and then they won't even be expecting everyone coming in and out and that's I think that's fun. Um, no, I think that what the character you were given too, as far as as you know having the microphone and everything for me I I love those style microphones by the way I think I have one like sitting back there somewhere or it's in my in my bag but um those microphones are just amazing like oh man I kind of want to make a bigger one for next year. you want to go bigger so I want to keep my little one because it's very lightweight very easy for me to have in control of and not lose control of my prop but. I just think it'd be so cool if I had like a like a full size like prop microphone like use PVC. Oh, okay. Um, I had problems with my light in the microphone. It's literally just an LED like a tea light. Right. That I would have to unscrew. So I've been thinking like, how could I make the microphone bigger? Like, can I add a shaker prop into it? Can I have an actual like? what's it called like a wire in there that I can switch on and off right like, how can I make it better <laughs> how can you make it better and more like easier for you like you said mm -hmm. you had to unscrew it and all that stuff yeah I I love the fact that you actually incorporated the lights into your microphone and into like little little props that you had um what I found cool I was talking to Jen about that you know and, and she's you know she's really um she's really popular for doing it on Goring 20s mm -hmm. with the whole light in the mouth and stuff which I thought is terrific uh, but to see more of you guys incorporate that, but not only within the mouth, but with props, uh, you did it with your microphone, which I thought was genius because it was kind of like, well, now is the devil's elixir kind of like possessing everything now? Like, is this like making her voice enhanced, like to a, a level that it's never been like kind of thinking, you know, with the storyline, everything like what is it doing to the microphone now? Like that now it's got me thinking like what's going on? In reality, yeah, it's just a light in there, but I'm just like for like a really cool effect. But now I'm just like, nah, there's more to it than that. There's there's a story behind what this microphone can do now. It's 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 a possessed microphone. <laughs> yeah, I think of it in that way too. Um, the backstory I kind of created for my character was that you know, um, and when guests would come up to me and ask me to sing, for the most part, I would like start like screaming and choking and like release like the most demonic noises as possible but my story was that like sasha the songbird um her cause of death was that she was strangled to death oh okay her vocal cords were crushed and she no one in goring 20s is aware that they're dead mm -hmm. so sasha's not aware that her vocal cords have been crushed and that she no longer has her singing voice so she's just as confused now is this like why isn't my voice working like it is yeah. kind of thing like she's like oh that's that's not that's not how it's supposed to be. Right. Um, so the power of the devil elixir bringing back to life, people back to life, is what also gives her her voice back. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. I, 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 like I said, I, I'm a sucker for a good story. I really <laughs> am. Like, I, I, you tell me a story, I'll be like, keep going. What, what else? There's got to be more to it. You know, I'm like, because I, I, I've, I've read so many comic books growing up, so it's just story yeah. after stories. Um, but yeah, I love a good story, especially when... And I say this all the time, and this is another thing that I really love about Not Scary Farm, is you guys give the fans an opportunity to be as immersed into it as you guys are. You know, like I said, you guys take these characters and make them your own, but you guys go above and beyond to take the time to make that backstory and be like, this is what my character went through. This is how it happened. This is who my character is most linked to. Like, I've seen a lot of, like, my character's good friends with this person but hates this person. I'm just like, wow, you guys got this all figured out. It's like you guys got your own little cheat sheets of, like, you know what you guys and it's little things you guys write down and i love that stuff you know it because it, it adds more immersive to it than rather just being singer number one jazz singer number two you know what i mean now you have a name you have a personality and it, what i love is it's what separates you from like maybe jazz singer number two 
you know, you're Sasha, but this is Brittany. Just saying, you know what I mean? Like, for example, and Brittany, she didn't get strangled, but Sasha did. You know what I mean? Brittany got killed some other way, but we don't know. So, and that's what I love about it is, is you guys also do a very good job of pointing people to like, oh, well, go talk to that person. They might know more about it. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just to, to with mess the, with people um, or not, but it's great. The, the blind tiger secret passcode. Yes, that was a big deal for the first year they did that. Yeah. It was hilarious. I was one of those people that was suckered into trying to find it too. We still got suckers this year. Really? Uh, we got to do a whole compilation of that like the first weekend because you know that's yeah. when it's going to be mostly people coming in. Like, where's this blind tiger at? Um, what were some of the funniest passcodes that you gave out? <sighs> passcodes. Because I know they would give you probably a little bit. Or did, would you guys just make stuff up or how would you guys go yeah, about that? so all the passcodes that we got... They were like 1920s slang terms, like out of context. Like, I can't even remember what most of them were. Or like applesauce. It's just Tiger. random, just like, what? <laughs> no, but yeah. the word for applesauce, am I allowed to cuss on this? Of course one? you are. There's no <laughs> so censorship. Applesauce here. in the 1920s was used as the word bullshit. Like, that's applesauce. Like, yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So we like applesauce. <laughs> Man, I, I, and how funny was it to watch these guests go up to that door and nothing happens? Some of them, I swear, they must have thought that like it was an actual like voice activated thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> they would go up to the door, like tap on it, and they'd be like, applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> thought someone was going to be on the other side and just let them in, huh? <laughs> what I found... Um, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. There were some people who would spend like 15 or 20 minutes at the door knocking, and at that point, you feel a little bad. We're like, maybe we should go interact with them, give them something else to do. Oh, my God. And, <laughs> They're going to keep trying. Well, and that's what was, and I think that's what was so genius about the maze finally, is now you finally, in the beginning, get to go inside the blind tiger. You know what I mean? So, like, I really, I mean, to kind of be that fan to year one try to get the password to go inside a fictional blind tiger, and then to kind of, for like last year, I actually get to, got to go into the Blind Tiger, and I'm like, this is like immersive as shit. Yeah, that's I another thing it. that we got to do. We we didn't get to do in the past with the passcode. Instead of directing them to the Blind Tiger entrance, you could direct them to the maze, right? And actually give the guests something to do. And 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 it's funny because you actually you guys can actually still get away with doing the passcode if you wanted to to make it even more fun for the guests because there was a bouncer that would sit outside of the mm -hmm. the maze that would bring people in, pick out the rope. That what by the way that right there I thought was an amazing touch of having them actually open the rope for you, let you in. It felt very exclusive. It felt very like secretive and stuff. I I just thought everything about that maze was just beautiful. And I then, loved it. Then coming out to you guys and kind of it, it, continuing that story of like. All right, we just saw how this place was built. Like we saw this, the elixir was built. I want that statue, by the way, of the Devil's Elixir in my like backyard or something as like a centerpiece, because that thing is so awesome. But I mean, I also heard some stories that some of you guys actually were fortunate enough to. Were you one of the lucky ones to go inside and, and oh, play in yes. room thirteen? The same room every time, but it was because that room was perfect for me. There was this lounge with a piano and a microphone on top of it. Okay. And I loved scaring in room 13. Felt like I was just, reminded me of my first year. Um, it was against the piano. I loved scaring there. I would lean against the piano and kind of just be like talking to myself. And there was a mirror like that stood up against the wall so I could see the guests Walking coming behind before you. they right. could see me. Right. So I could see them as they were getting close. And then I would spring up, be like, have you come to drink the devil's elixir? One drink will change your life. Like, I would try to get them to drink the devil's elixir. And then right around the corner, like, next to me was, like, a hidden scare actor for mm -hmm. them to pop out while they were distracted. Right. And I, and just about everyone I talk, actually, everyone that I've talked to this month for Goring 20s Takeover, um, that's exactly what they've all said. They've all gotten a chance to go and play. I think mm -hmm. that's really cool that they let you guys go in there and kind of really combine the two worlds. And then at the very last night, they they came out and did the dance yes. and everything. Like, I think that's cool that you guys had that like kind of like that family ties going right there. Is you got to play inside of their playground, they got to come outside and play outside we with love you guys. Family. Yeah, I mean, you guys seem like so connected. And then like some of the stories that I heard of just kind of 
you know, to see those Goring 20 characters outside, inside now, it's mm -hmm. like, now this story just got good. I'm like, it was already good, but now that you're adding some of the key players to this thing now, I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. I sadly never got to see, unless I did and I didn't notice it, but I didn't get to see any of you guys in there, but I think it's so cool that you guys got to go in there and really enhance that story for others on whoever was lucky enough to go in when you guys were in. Um, how many at a time would they let you guys go in? Was it or is it was it every few couple days or how would that was it more towards the end of the season they let you guys go in? Towards the like middle to end of the season, they start asking us like who would like to take a vacation to room thirteen. Oh, that's a good <laughs> little uh, that's a good little way to kind of reference it too for you guys. Yeah, I even had guests that would walk through it and be like, "Hey, aren't you from outside?" I'm like, "Yes." Here, welcome to my show. You made it. You finally made it. Oh, it's so good to connect the story right there to really sell that story. You're like, yeah, I got my new gig at the hotel. Yeah. You know, that's like so cool. Um, yeah. So they're like, okay, you can all take turns in room 13. I was like, scaring and amazed again. Yes. <laughs> I know, and a lot of people frown upon that for some reason. Like, I've gotten an opportunity to scare and amaze in the past. Like, I don't know why that is. Like, I I honestly think, like, for me, I don't know if I could do a night on streets, but I could do a night in a maze because in the maze, you're kind of in one area and you, you have control of that area. Whereas in streets, man, you got to, it's really, I, I would say for me, I would have more difficulty out in streets than I would in a maze. But that's just me. I don't, I don't see why people like frown upon that. I'm like, dude, you realize everybody comes to see the mazes, right? Mm -hmm. Like the scare zones are literally atmosphere to keep you scared. So until you get to the next maze and they're supposed to keep your story immersed and stuff, but everyone comes to see these mazes. I don't know why people are always frowning upon and scaring in a maze. You can have a haunt without scare zone, but you can't have a haunt without mazes. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it just wouldn't fit. What would you do? You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, and I, and that, and that brings up a, a good kind of segue to that. Cause the season prior you were in, um, wax works and that's a, that's a great maze. Um, you were towards like the, the middle end of the, of the maze area. Uh, what was that like for you kind of getting this scare in that as well? Oh man, I loved wax works. I loved my room. I loved the story my character was given. I had a ball in there. My room had a very good layout with lots of corners and lots of places for me to hide. Like I had shelves, I had like a table, I had the whole huge dollhouse mm -hmm. that I could kind of crawl under or crawl behind and then pop out of. Right. You had like a little playground there. Yeah, I had everywhere. a little playground set up just yeah. for me. That's and that's isn't that fun? It's kind of like your own little zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you had people coming in and out. I mean, I I remember we went in a couple times, we saw you scaring. Um, and I, I, I think, I, I think that year I would only go in just to hope to see you because Aww. I think you were at the time, the only person I knew that was working that maze. So I was like, Oh, I hope we get to see Katie. And I was like, she's in one of these areas. I'll, I'll find her. We'll find her. We'll get her. Um, but we were fortunate enough to go a few nights where we did see you. Uh, and it was, uh, I mean, that maze is, is just a ball. I mean, I, I always compare it to one of my, uh, favorite cult classics, uh, house of wax. Mm -hmm. Um, if you ever seen that movie back in the day. Uh, but it's the same concept, and I and I think they did a great job with telling that story. But yeah, I mean, that, I I I know prior to that, uh, I had met you at photo meets. I'd seen you at photo meets. Um, was that year your first year actually scaring at an event? Yep, that was Very your first year, first huh? Year. And then, so what was that for like for you to transition from obviously uh, doing the photo meets and stuff where you're kind of cosplaying, getting photos taken of you, video, all that stuff, um, comparing that. I mean, you already said you were a theater kid. So, I mean, I, I guess for you, it wouldn't have been really difficult to go out there and, and perform then really to, to kind of sell the stories that they were given. Right. Mm -hmm. So for you, it was probably nothing getting into that. It was just a bunch of fun. Just it was like, big, I finally yeah. get to use my theater kid skills for a adult purpose exactly no exactly and that's what it is it's like these haunts are fucking for they're they're scary they're for adults but you you like you said you got to use your theater skill skills and that includes the world of improvisation that's I, that's what i look at haunt is mostly especially you now being in goring 20s it's like improvisation is big um and of course getting all the info information they give you and then you selling it obviously the story that is supposed to be told so yeah, I mean, I, I trust me. I'm right there with you. I'm always, I'm curious. I'm fascinated with all of it. It's, it's the behind the scenes for me is always the best. Um, 
and luckily you've gotten to see a lot of that behind the scenes and how it's all put on and stuff. That must have been something for you at the theater kick too. You're like, oh man, I'm kind of watching all get set up and getting ready, all that stuff. Like, I, that's amazing. Yeah, I love. I love how not how detailed Knott's mazes are. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go through the mazes as a guest, I'm just like drinking up all the details. Um, Waxworks in particular was very detailed. Very and much. I love like imagining of like how much work went into making this maze. Mm -hmm. And now you get to cement your legacy into that yeah. maze. You know what I mean? And that's that's really cool. Um, man, but I, I, I have to say overall i i think you were phenomenal this year um every time we walk through it was always catching something hilarious um watching you scare watching you interact with others um it was it was really cool to just walk through that zone and just kind of chill for a little bit and just kind of see everything everyone have a great time everyone bringing that story to life um if there's anything you'd want to say to the next generation, whether they're coming in for the first time as guest or coming in for the first time auditioning, uh, Maze scares on, like, what advice would you give the next generation? Oh, man. For everyone who's auditioning and getting a part, whatever role you're casted as is what you make of it. Yeah. So you can develop your character, whatever you're cast as, in any way and present that character to the world in a way that nobody else has played that character. Right. Like you really make it your own. Right. No, I 100% agree. And, and you've done that with you, your character, obviously. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guarantee you, uh, you're probably going to be in the Knotts Gallery next year as for your character. Someone's probably going <laughs> to draw you up. I think they probably already did that, maybe. Or maybe you are you already in, were you in featured in the gallery? I don't think so. I think next year's your year. <laughs> I think you're one of those breakout roles where people are, someone's going to draw you and someone's going to like oh, it. And, and now you're going to have your very own art piece coming, coming soon. That'll be the day. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be, uh, I'm going to come up to you with a Sharpie and be like, can you autograph this real quick? <laughs> sure. <laughs> add it to the, add it to the wall right here of all the autographs. Um, but no, I, I think that I, I, I personally, I'm always looking forward to the next year to see what, what comes next and everything. Um, you did talk about how you do want to you do plan on trying to return next year, obviously, with auditions coming pretty soon um, and uh, talking about wanting to take that character to the next level, obviously, to, to take it to the next step, how you elevate it. Um, I have to ask, is sliding in the future for you? Oh, man. See, the thing is not as this character, not as this so, character. As of now, the flappers aren't allowed to slide. OK, that being said. I would like to get into sliding and slide as in a different zone. Oh, okay. We'll leave it at that. Coming soon. Coming soon. We'll leave it at that. And that's all you get. That's the only teaser you get from that. But uh, I, I, I can't wait to see, uh, especially next year, if you come back, to, you go back to Goring 20s. When you come back to Goring 20s. Let's just put it that way. Um, I can't wait to see where, what you do next. I can't wait to see who comes in now um, and see who adds to that story and who comes back. Um, and how you guys all uh, create chaos this year. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, final question for you on the podcast today. Uh, one of the hardest questions that I have with a lot of guests. Oh, man. Oh, man, indeed. Oh, man, oh, man indeed. Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh, my God. This is the hardest question. <laughs> okay, see, it's hard. it's hard to put because... Horror is such a big genre, and there's little sub-genres in horror. Indeed. There's, like, psychological horror. There's, like, just gross-out bloody horror. <laughs> the so slashers, many. all that stuff. I like the original Silent Hill movie. I wow. really like, um, okay. plot-wise, I really like, what's it called? Why am I drawing a blank on one of my favorite movies? Um, well, I really like... You know corny horror movies that are so gory, it's ridiculous? Oh, yeah. I have a soft spot for those. Okay. I really like this movie called Rubber. It's about Rubber. A, okay. a, a tire, like a tire in a car that becomes sentient and starts exploding people's heads. And that is probably the best answer I've ever gotten on this show as far as horror movies. And I don't think anyone's ever heard of it. And I love it. I have... A big spot in my heart for horror movies that are just absolutely ridiculous. There's this one called Velocipaster. 
It's oh, so you're 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 big time into those like the B movies, like yes, the out there movies. The B, okay, it's probably even below B. Like it's it's, it's like we barely so made it on a budget funny. with this movie. <laughs> the blood, it looks like ketchup. It's about a pastor becomes a velociraptor at night. Wow, and he, um, I'm kind of like, interested in that actually. It's like a vigilante justice movie. Like he he gets justice against the wrongdoers only at night. We gotta watch as that. a pastor. I mean, as a, as a velociraptor. But no, I was thinking, okay, my favorite um, horror movie plot, why is this hereditary? Okay, that's a good one. I, I was a big fan of that one, uh, I psychologically. I love A24 movies. They're really good. I, I uh, Me and her, I think the most recent A24 movie we watched was The Iron Claw. Ooh. And it was based on an actual wrestling family from the 80s. Um, very tragic story, but such a good movie. Zac Efron's in it. Um What's a lip from Shameless? Is I don't know if you A24 know. Twenty four movies never give me what I expect. Yeah, you you're going in one thing and then you come out a whole different person. I'm just mm -hmm. like Hereditary fucked me up. Midsummer, I was just like, okay. You know that movie? Like your final opinion on it was supposed to be like how suscept a test to see how susceptible you'd be to joining a cult. Yeah, I didn't like the movie. I, that was like out of the two that he's made i was like hereditary was better but i was like this one just weirded me out and i was like nope i'm good so i'm not joining a cult uh you are you gonna see watch <laughs> the movie and at the end i was like you know what good for her she she got rid of that that ex in one way or another and she found community and people who who really understood her and then i watched it and someone's like kate this means you'd be susceptible to joining a cult. Like, I'm like, yeah. Like, I don't think it would be that hard to convince me. You're going to burn people alive in the in the big shack and everything. And, you know, even be like, oh, no, we're, just having, a bonf we're just having a bonfire. It's all good. Uh, no, that, that, he's good. He's a good director. And I think he's doing something new that's not horror, which I'm surprised. He's got a new movie coming out pretty soon, Ari Aster. Um, and it's not horror. And I was like, and it's a big cast. Like, I, I, I forgot exactly who, but I remember what, looking at some of the names. I'm like, damn, you got some good people in this movie. So I'm going to look out for that, whether it's horror or not, because I think he's a good director. So if it's, even if it's not horror, I feel like watching whatever movie that is going to change you psychologically because it's area. It's going to be probably psychological <laughs> somehow, maybe psychological drama now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see what's up. That's a good answer, though. Um, Hereditary is a good one. I remember after watching that movie, I was legit kind of like, fuck, this cult's fucked up, mm -hmm. dude. Like, what the fuck? But, like, Toni Collette, she's a great actress. Um, I have that monologue she says over the dinner table memorized. Do you really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Well, it's good to know if I ever need an actress for a short film, for, like, a horror film. I, I could probably call you for that. Um, cause I got some things written that I think you would very much enjoy oh, uh, a little, little twisted, but you know, when we get there, we'll get there. Um, but no, I, I think, uh, a good choice for a movie, but, uh, what you were talking about the other movies, I was like, I don't think I've ever heard of those movies, but I, now I want to watch them. Um, that's awesome. Well, Kate, where can people find you on social media if they want to follow you on you know, your cosplay journey? Cause, uh, we didn't even get to the cosplay stuff. I want to bring you back on the show to talk about specifically that one day. Um, where can they find you uh, for your cosplays, for your your haunt stuff? Or what's a good social media handle to find Key you? Key Lime Kate. Key, Key Lime, Lime Kate. Key Lime like the pie. My name Kate. Kate. Do you like Key Lime Kate or pie? I do like Key Lime pie. Yeah. But I feel like a living fraud because it's actually not my favorite pie. What's your favorite pie? Apple. <laughs> but Apple Kate doesn't. Apple no. Kate just doesn't click on. But Key Lime Kate was That's the one. cherry on top. I like that. Uh, Kate, we can't wait to see what happens, uh, in 2024 with you as far as Goring 20s goes. Uh, we can't wait to see you back, um, and, uh, cause more chaos and maybe, maybe keep Martin down for good this time. <laughs> Can you tie Martin down anywhere? On the I railroad mean, tracks. Perfect. There's a spot. Perfect. You know, every night that man led like the the conga line that we do at the end of the dance, I would like strangle him afterward. Like, why were you running? Because <laughs> if you sprint, we all have to sprint. And we are our our dogs are killing us by the end. Our of the dogs night. are killing us. You know, just from walking around in those shoes all night. So to have to run now, we're good. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what you guys do this year. I mean, it's, it's a ball. It's a pleasure. It's been an honor to get to have all you guys and talk about the Goring twenties. Uh, I know, uh, our, 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 our viewers very much enjoy it and, and, and they love hearing your guys' stories. 
Um, and yeah, I love seeing uh, I love seeing females dominate the game as well. That's what's that's what's going on right now. Female power. It's a revolution in the haunt game, and I love seeing it because um, there's there's now we can and I've I've always said this, but people should proudly know now that the girls can scare even harder than the guys. As they should. No problem. I've seen it. It's it's terrifying what 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 a lot of females out there do for, and I'm just like. Oh man, oh man! I mean, we grew up watching so many horror movies where yeah. the big monster, like The Exorcist, is played by a girl. Reagan, yeah. yeah. Tony Collette possessed at the end of Hereditary. Yeah. Terrifying, cutting off her own head. <laughs> Need inspiration to become a hot monster? Just watch all those horror movies where the scariest thing is it is a possessed woman. Evil Dead. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Well, for all those watching at home, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, next week is a big episode for us. Not only is it our season finale with the Goring 20s, but it's episode 200, and we can't wait. Thank you for being part of the next uh, our 100 to 200 legacy. That's huge for us. I mean, to, to think that we would ever take this show to 200 episodes, I never I never thought it would come true. Um, and, and to have so many amazing, talented people like yourself on the show to tell their stories and everything – brings me a ton of joy i love doing it i love talking with people i love getting the stories out there um and i like i said i know there's still more that we have to talk about and, and we can do a whole nother episode for that so i'm glad we got to do this goring 20s thank you guys for all you guys do uh you guys are a great talent there and uh you guys do amazing stuff there and i don't know there's just there's no i mean you have to come see this with your own two eyes there i could talk about it all day but you have to see it with your own two eyes in order to be to, to know what I'm talking about. But with all that being said, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast with the finale of Goring 20s Month. I'm getting a little emotional thinking about it already. I can't believe it's already over. <laughs> it's almost over. My guest, Kate. And uh, we'll see you guys real soon. <laughs>